Greetings. This is Elvin Eternal, also known as Love Linux OS, coming to you with my second educational, informative tutorial, however you want to classify it, video. And like I said in my post last week, that I would get back, I would be uh, making a video about how to do virtual machines or run virtual operating systems. You know, um, there's a lot of great tools out there for virtual machines, but uh, and, and many open sources one, open source ones. But the one and the most, the simplest one that I want to concentrate on is Oracle VirtualBox. So uh, before we look at VirtualBox here, I want to show you a few things in the upper right hand corner of my screen that just give us a little statistics about this machine I'm running. This is a, a software called Kunky and it's telling you the version of the kernel that I'm running. I'm running Linux 3.8. Um, it's Ubuntu so this is their release 31 uh, and I have AMD Phenom X3 so I got three core processor right here and I'm running about 60 you know 70 percentile on, on all cores right now uh, my memory is total is 4 gigs but a quarter of that a quarter gig or 250 megabytes is being used for video RAM and I'm not doing too much with my swap and this is pretty much what pretty much my network statistics right here what's going up what's going down uh, what's coming down things of that nature we're not going to get into that today, but what we will talk about is, all right, we can go on the start menu. And we can get Oracle VirtualBox here. Oh, we just come here. I've already got it in the lunch, lunch menu or lunch bar. And we can start right here. Now, if we click on help, we can just go to VirtualBox website. And we can get all the good make good information about VirtualBot. We can look and see uh, if we look at just some screenshots. You can see you can run it in Windows and Mac and on Linux and Ubuntu. Now we'll go download VirtualBox. You will see it's for 32-bit, 64-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit for Windows. Um, Mac OS 10 and, and Unix or Solaris, Sun Solaris host operating system. Now, when we say host, there is two terminologies that we need to be clear about when we're going to run a virtual machine. We need to have an understanding of what the host OS is, which is very simple. Where are you installing the VirtualBox software? So, if you're installing in your on your Windows computer. Then whatever version of Windows XP, Vista, 7, 8, then that that's the host operating system of the host OS. Now the guest OS is whatever operating system you're installing inside the virtual machine. And we'll get to that. But the big thing here we look at for Linux host. The one amazing thing is because you got so many options about what distribution you want to run. Or what distro you want to run with Linux? Well, you have them same option whenever you're getting ready to download software. Um, Debian packages, or Red Hat uh, package manager, or Slackware packages, and it's Pack Manager. It's so many different packages. Pack the way the software for Linux is packaged and controls in, inside its repositories to where you get there's an option. And mainly the main forks decide those options. Like I showed you in my first video, if you go to uh, Wikipedia and list out list of distros, you get that nice interactive uh, diagram of the different forks, when they started, how they started, who they started, and a link to their web pages. So you got an unlimited amount of options and availability and, and what you want to do. But whenever you decide on your distro or what distro you want to run in a virtual machine, then you need to also go out there and see how it's packaged together. And then you'll, you'll learn more about installing different styles of software. Like I said, you can install it with YUM, which is 
the package manager, or package installer for uh, Red Hat. Or you can use App Git or Aptitude, which is the package manager for Debian based systems. Now, pretty much what's beautiful about any type of uh, open source software, you can contribute, you can join the community, you can work on the software, you can do different things. You can become a member of the community. You see how to get to the community. And that's the beautiful thing about this whole movement that is changing the way uh, we, how we think about, how we use, how we interact with our computer hardware. Now that we've, uh, we've looked at VirtualBox website, let's create a machine. There's two ways we can go here, create new. Or we can just click new right here and we can start. Now one of my screenshots early was down was uh, down small links. So I said we was going I was going to show you how I did it. So this is how I did it. Now down small link is based on Nopix, which is based on Debian. And then you can see we can go Debian uh, with all our different versions of Linux. You can go uh, 32 bit or 64 bit when it all started happening. We're going to pick Debian regular because Down Small can only run as 32 bit. As a matter of fact, the uh, the minimum requirements for Down Small, if you go and go into their website, you will see it's uh, a 486DX processor and 64 megs of RAM, which is minuscule on, on today's scale. So instead of us giving it 384 megabytes, Let's just give it 128. We'll leave everything else the same. Um, we'll start doing just, why not just use VirtualBot disk image, do it dynamically, and we won't need eight gigabytes for this to max out on this all. So now, now that we created the machine, we could power it on, but it's gonna ask us for for some type of source or give me give me a boot disk or give me something bootable anybody who knows have always installed some software or boot it from another device other than your hard drive and turn it on the PC know that you have to put something in 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 the computer to boot right click on our virtual machine that we created and we'll click on settings and this brings us up to all the settings about our virtual machine and basically if you click on storage you see that we have already created our hard drive or virtual disk drive which is symboled by three small disk platters and it's called down small BDI just like we said virtual disk image uh, virtual box disk image here we go here uh, we have an empty ID controller or our CD drive what we need to do is is put an image in there we, we could let this this image come through our virtual machine several different ways. Uh, we could let it come through, uh, pass through our CD-ROM drive. There's options for that. Or we could just browse to a file on our hard drive. And you can come here, we can just choose choose the file um, in, our, in our system. But I've already done that. We're going to use damn small 4.4.10 Sys Linux version. And that think you can do an init RD version as well. Uh, but we just use Sys Linux. Click OK. And now we're ready to start. And here we go. This is the boot screen or the boot menu for damn small Linux. Uh, it's 50 megabyte live biz card. It's the business card of Linux, of Linux distros. Um, and it basically telling you all the options you have. Let's just hit enter and let's boot. We'll move this over so we can see where our how our system is doing. And it's putting a load on us, but we're still op running pretty optimal. Um, we still hadn't went over a gig of, me gig of memory being used. Wow, that was pretty fast booting into a, a virtual machine. Uh, one thing that I did want to point out, if you saw the verbose 
language on the boot screen you can go back and slow up the video but uh, if you have if you are a technician and you're doing hardware troubleshooting then it is my suggestion to you to go and get you a copy of any bootable Linux mainly the two that I find very verbose about hardware whether it is that present whether it is uh, uh, bad whether it is working you know is no picks and damn small so you know these should be staples in any good technicians toolbox he should have a bootable CD or a bootable pen drive of DSL and no picks now one thing that in particular about this that I had to do with damn small is turn off um, mouse integration and because I'm running live I can install a few tools here that will let me seamlessly capture the mouse or integrate my mouse and that's fine because this is just for a demonstration but here we go and even here we have the Dillo Red web browser but we also have Firefox and the Dillo is pretty fast itself you cannot you know sleep on the tools for speed that you have inside damn small the tools for speed that you have this is a phenomenal tool for speed um, it, it hugely phenomenal you know as far as images images resources but it's just not a full feature browser for me I'm not gonna get it, go away from how fast this browser is how compliant this browser is with standards uh, so but it's a file system browser too let's go with Firefox Once again, we'll come up to Damn Small website. And one thing I love about Firefox is you got your key combinations that let you put the, you know, you can just type in the domain name and you can get the prefix and suffix or the the subdomain or, or the home, the host domain added to, to your system, to your uh, URL, Uniform Resource Locator. So, uh, but this is basically it. You have way more than just Firefox. You know, this is a pretty loaded um, desktop. You have editors come in here, and uh, you, you have uh, pretty much right here at your, at your tip, and it's quite a fast, you know, um, system. You know, it's very fast. Let's you sit here and do what you need to do on so many different levels and be productive. That's what I'm amazed about is that it's ready to be productive right here. You can open up. Um, you have word processing. So you have pretty much a fully functional Linux operating system that is extremely fast. Um and it's fast and a very small footprint right here where you can run it live or you can install it. And this is damn small. So, you know, if you have some old hardware, so, uh, you know, uh, you don't have limited resources in your new hardware. If you're worried about, you know, can you or are you capable of running a version of Linux? Well, the damn small should re erase all of those doubts. You know, if you have some, having a 486DS, that was my computer that I built back in 1997. So, so you have one of them guys laying around. I'm amazed. And you better damn well go and get it. Bring it out. Install damn small Linux on it. And make it be damn productive. We're going to log out here. and we're going to wrap this up <clears throat> as you see the whole process of shutting down and everything and I, as we shut down the load we still we still didn't get over and I was hoping we was going to get over um, a gig of RAM but we still didn't use over a gig of RAM we have you know but between 6 and 7 uh, 
made a uh, percentage of our processors running. We didn't do too much on the internet. We did a little browsing. But that's it. This is VirtualBox. And we had damn small Linux running in VirtualBox. I really hope this was a help to someone. Um, if you have any questions or comment, please leave them below, below the video. And they will all be welcome. Thank you and be blessed. I am.